Well, hello. Thank you for watching this short video on Trauma-Informed Oregon's implementation resources. Over the past several years, Trauma-Informed Oregon has created these tools in order to support TIC implementation. We know how hard implementation can be. And in this video, I will explain why they were created, the purpose they serve, how they are similar and different, and how they can be used together. So let me share my screen with you. Get started. So using trauma-informed organ resources to guide tick implementation. My name is Stephanie Sundborg. I'm the Director of Research and Evaluation at Trauma-Informed Oregon, and I'm always happy to be talking about implementation. So in this video, I will be referencing four tools, the Standards of Practice for Trauma-Informed Care, the Roadmap for Trauma-Informed Care, the TIC Screening Tool, and the Trauma-Informed Care Logic Model. So I wanna talk about each of them individually first and how they were created and why, and then I'll talk about um, their similarities and differences. So let's start with the standards of practice for TIC. The standards of practice was one of the first tools we created at Trauma-Informed Oregon. It was originally created in 2015 through a thorough and collaborative process involving key stakeholders, content experts, and individuals with lived experience. Um, it represents a set of agency level actions and standards. Since then, we updated it in 2017 and also adapted it for both education and healthcare settings. The standards are organized into different domains, such as leadership commitment and endorsement, which you can see here, environment and safety, workforce development, and services and service delivery. SAMHSA, the Substance Abuse and Mental Health Services Administration, their concept of trauma and guidance for a trauma-informed approach from 2014, which has been highly cited in the field, was used to guide this tool, and those elements are reflected in each section. The intent of the standards was to promote discussion within an organization at multiple levels and result in descriptive responses, kind of qualitative answers, um, and identify maybe opportunities for trauma-informed Oregon, or trauma-informed care, excuse me. Organizations using the standards appreciated the comprehensiveness of this document but we're finding that their review process resulted in a substantial amount of information and data. The domains of the standards are not in a particular order and there isn't necessarily a sequence, so organizations weren't sure where to start. So to address this, we decided to create a tool that would reflect a sense of sequence and order. For example, we know that people need to receive training before they are ready for implementation. In addition to representing a sense of sequence, we wanted to include elements that reflect the process of organizational change. Therefore, we included ideas such as agency readiness, process and infrastructure, and adoption and monitoring. These are all referred to as steps in implementation. So all of these icons are representing different steps in the implementation process. We had come across the Missouri model, which is a developmental framework for trauma-informed approaches. They were talking about the phases of implementation and this language seemed to really resonate with people. With permission from their team, we added this language to our roadmap to TIC. The first two phases help organizations get ready for implementation. These phases include building awareness, getting training, making sure the agency is ready, and creating process and infrastructure. The second two phases are focused on gathering ideas for TIC, making a work plan, and making trauma-informed changes to policy and practice. The signpost at the end reflects the need for evaluation and assessment, which is also important. The roadmap to trauma-informed care was well-received, but organizations were wanting to know what to do. The roadmap didn't give very much detail about what agency strategies need to happen in each phase or even within each step. So to address this, we created the TIC screening tool. The structure is the same as a roadmap. You can see the colors are the same and the icons are the same, but we've added some details below each step to highlight the developmental accomplishments within that step. So I will refer to each of those elements, numbers one through seven, as actions. 
The screening tool is meant to reflect the developmental stages involved throughout the process of implementation. The actions are generally additive and tend to get more advanced or involved as you move down the list. Many of the actions within each step are necessary, but some are optional depending on the organization's circumstances and context. The intent of this tool was to give organizations a way to look at the depth of actions involved within each step and phase. This helps organizations plan um, time and resources because the TIC effort actually does take a lot longer and, and can be quite an involved process. This um, screening tool also helps organizations identify potential barriers to progress. So let me show you what I mean by that. So here is an example um, of a screening tool that was filled out at an implementation workshop. This is a very typical pattern. We see this often where an organization has maybe accomplished a few things across most of the phases. Um, but oftentimes the organizations are still struggling with implementation. So an organization that has this response pattern would likely say that they're doing trauma-informed care. However, it sometimes hasn't permeated the entire organization or become part of their culture. And so one of the things that the screening tool can help highlight is where there are some barriers um, that, you know, are are creating some stalling or a little bit more slower movement forward. And so focusing on some of the additional actions within that step can help maybe move for efforts forward uh, in an easier way. This tool in collaboration with the standards can be a great way to inform an organization's TIC work plan. The final tool I wanna to talk about today is the logic model. The logic model is built on a number of assumptions. First, the assumption that trauma is prevalent among service users and staff. Second, the assumption that services and settings can be re-traumatizing for individuals if they feel unsafe or don't feel they have control, power, choice, voice, or value. And the third assumption that trauma-informed care calls on an organization to take these challenges into account and create services and settings that are safe, empowering, collaborative and responsive to cultural, historical, and gender issues. This logic model is laid out in a typical fashion for logic models, kind of if this, then this, then that. And so you can see that the first box is really what is needed for trauma-informed care. With this in place, the next box talks about what individuals and agencies do to demonstrate trauma-informed care. Following this is what we hypothesize will change as a result to trauma-informed care changes to policy, practice, environment, and relationships. This represents the felt experience of trauma-informed care. The final box includes the hypothesized outcomes that are likely associated with trauma-informed care. So the elements of this tool have been informed by years of expertise and scholarship and elements within this diagram are being researched and empirical evidence is starting to accumulate. Now that I've talked about each of the tools separately, let's talk about how they are the same and how they are different. So each of the tools answers one, two, or three aspects of the what, when, how, and why regarding TIC implementation. The standards of practice addresses the what we do and the how we do it. The roadmap to TIC addresses the when we do it, um, giving organizations an idea of sort of the sequence, like I mentioned. And the TIC screening tool combines all three of those, the what, the how, and the when. But that still leaves the why, which brings us back to the TIC logic model. So this tool speaks to the what. You can see the first two boxes are actually talking about what we need and what we do. But one of the bigger contributions of this tool is understanding why we do this. We talk about trauma-informed care as an engagement tool. When services and settings are trauma-informed, you are more likely to have improved engagement and satisfaction for both service users and staff. We believe that this improvement in engagement and satisfaction comes from the fact that they feel they belong and that they are safe, empowered, trusted, and cared for. From there, once people have had that experience, 
we suggest that engagement and satisfaction indicators like appointment completions and lower employee turnover will be reflected in the data. And once those are in place, that can lead to better health and better wellness. So before wrapping up this discussion, I wanna show you how these tools map onto each other so that you can use them together to inform your implementation efforts. So here is part of the logic model, the what do we need for trauma-informed care. You can see that the elements of the standards are mapped directly to this. Remember the standards answer the how and the what questions. So here are some of the hows, and here are some of the whats. Then taking it one step further, you can map on the steps of the screening tool to see where on this instrument these elements would be picked up. The same alignment and coordination can be seen in the next box of the logic model, the what do we do. Many of the actions captured in the standards map onto this piece of the logic model. Additionally, you can see that the screening tool phases are picked up here as well. So primarily you'll see phases three and four because they represent the changes, the trauma-informed changes to um, policy and practice. Okay, so that wraps up my overview of the Trauma-Informed Oregon resources related to implementation. Hopefully I've answered many of your questions, but if not, I invite you to reach out to info, info at traumainformedoregon.org. We can also provide information about additional training, consultation, and technical assistance services we can offer. So thanks so much for your time and thank you so much for your work on trauma-informed care implementation.